Hey guys, AJ here, back with another one for you. So today we're going to do a little bit something different, guys. We're going to do some TCAP adjacent stuff. But this guy right here, this is Jack Reynolds is his name. And he is a convicted preto, right? And he is a real piece of trash. But he had done, he got out of jail. And uh, he's trying to say that... Um, Social media is opening up up the up, up ways for people like him to prey on children more. So he did a, a whole bunch of interviews um, around like 2017, 18 to kind of like share his techniques to help law enforcement. So I don't think that that makes this guy like not a piece of trash. He's still a horrible piece of trash. But let's just jump into this and see what he has to say. But before we do, guys, please remember to like, subscribe, drop a comment. It really helps to keep this channel going. Check out the lives. I usually try and go live on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, join the Discord, guys. I dropped the link of the Discords and the lives. So feel free to come over there. If you have a request, drop it in the comments. I would prefer that you drop it in the request section um, in the Discord. So, all right, you guys, let's jump into this, this now. And then first, we have an article called Convicted uh, Child SA Person Says Social Media Is Giving More Tools to Predators. Okay? And this is this guy right here. Look at this guy. Look at him. Oh, man. Look at that. Okay. Authors note this story. So this is the disclaimer. Okay. A convicted uh, predator who says that he's he has more than 300 victims is concerned about social media giving predators even more tools to harm children. Uh, Call 6 investigator Kara Kenny sat down with Jack Reynolds near his current home in Anderson to talk about how he found his victims and how parents should protect their children against people like, like him. So Reynolds' insight, while, while difficult to hear, sheds light on the growing number of teachers, coaches, and mentors arrested in recent years in Central Indiana for preying on students. So, Reynolds himself was arrested in 1989 and served more than 12 years in prison. Social media is a killer. If I would have had social media back then, I'm struggling with the number of lives that I would have destroyed. And it's not good, he says Reynolds. So, social media is opening the door to where the access is there. Okay, below, Jack Reynolds discusses what things that Predators are looking for um, as they target the victims. Reynolds used his position as a youth umpire, referee, and mentor to find opportunities to victimize children. Wow, you guys. Wow. This is just like that guy in that, um, in that Florida sting that we talk, talked about on live. He was an umpire. So, okay. Um... He said, I, I fondled them and I groomed them. Um, oh, look. He says that he was abused at age seven. I don't, I, I don't really care much about his, his story because I don't really care what the reason is, right? Ridiculous. Um, I groomed their families and I groomed society. I would check out their family's situation. I would check out their clothing to see how well that they were doing financially. So Reynolds moved from town to town in the 1970s and 80s, eventually landing in Tipton, Indiana. He preyed upon little boys without friends or without a strong father figure. Wow, guys, this is why fathers are needed in the homes. You guys, I don't care what anyone says. Okay? Father figures are needed. Fathers are needed, especially in the home. So if I thought the child had friends that would, that would tell, I would not approach him. If I thought the father was a threat, I would not approach the child. And that's just the thing, guys, that people don't understand. The practical benefit of having a man in the house, right? Now, you might say, AJ, you sound like some conservative. No, 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 no. I just, I was raised with two parents. I've seen those who weren't. And I can tell you that, you know, you know, my dad was a masculine male figure. And, you know, there was a couple times where, you know, someone did try and assault one of my siblings and my dad was, went over there and took care of it. And it makes me shudder to think like what my life 
would have been like without my dad, right? Okay. Um, a mother that is having problems with the family. Well, here comes the superhero to help help out. So, so Reynolds preferred a little boys with no s experience. I wanted to be the one to teach teach them. Said said Reynolds. Ugh. Um. So he was asked how the parents of his victims did not catch on. I played the normal role in society. He even went as far to get married. So guys, he was married. Yikes. I wanted people to think he's he's normal. He has a job. He pays the bills. And that's the thing about TCAP, guys, is that people think that, that they know what a predator look, look looks like. They had some aimless drifter or some weirdo. That it's like a Donald Morrison, right? Or or a seabird, you know? But but it's not. It's guys that can act and look normal. Guys and girls, men and women, you know? Uh, he said that he showered his victims with praise. It made them feel like, wow, he's paying me attention. He was arrested in 1989 in Tipton after a little boy called the police when Reynolds tried to essay him. This was before cell phones, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Wow. They found, so this news place has found many recent cases involving Central Indiana teachers and co-coaches crossing the line with students. That started with texting and messages over social media. So the access with social social media is wide open. And it scares me. It does. And this is coming from this sicko. Uh, Sexual contact by weight of social media would have been a very deadly tool for me. Uh... Okay, here we go. Shannon Taylor, then an Indianapolis public schools counselor, used Facebook to send her vic- victims naked photos. Court record. record. So, matter of fact, let's click on this. Look at this. Former IPS counselor accused of sex with students avoids prison time. What? What? She pleaded guilty to three felony counts of dissemination of matter harmful to minors. Agreed sentence is six years on home detention. So she didn't even get any prison time. She was initially charged with 11 counts, pleading not guilty. Guys, so if this was a guy, do you think that they would have gotten off so easy? No. She was accused of having relationships with at least two students on multiple occasions between October 2015 and February 2016. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, where were we? Where were we? Okay. And former t- t- teacher today, Keisha Knuckles, is accused of using Twitter and Snapchat and the Kick app to flirt with her teenage victims before ha- having sex with them. Oh, she's back in jail. Oops. So, Call 6 Investigates sur- surveyed more than a dozen school districts in Indiana and found some cor- corporations with no social media policy at all for staff members, including Lafayette, Speedway, and Perry Township. Perry Township is currently working on a social media policy f- for staff. According to, to Rhonda Myers, an administrative assistant to the superintendent, the, the district issued the following statement. As the social media landscape constantly evolves, our district will continue to update our policies to address those changes. We have channels and tools in place so students and staff can communicate in an appropriate space. We are also committing to ensuring teachers and staff have a clear understanding of limits, boundaries, and expectations regarding social media interactions. Um, Call 6 investigates uh, did find several school districts with specific language about being friends with, with students on social media. They say an employee should not friend or friend a current student who is not family member on the personal site. Friending is discouraged. Wow. 
Someone else found it concerning that some school districts don't have social media policies in place. I think it is disgusting. But when you think about it, there are ways to get around anything, he said. If a teacher really wants to get inside a child's personal life, they're going to find a way. Renell says that setting up road roadblocks may help prevent incidents or catch predators like himself. I think that it's worth the school's efforts. I think that it's worth legislative efforts. Efforts. He said schools should not have the sole responsibility in protecting children from predatory teachers and coaches. Parents need to pay more attention to their kids. Be more conscientious and be more loving. For goodness sake, be a, be a parent. Well, that's nice coming from this guy. I mean, come on. He just sounds so judgy. I understand that he's trying to do his little good deed and all, but it's like, dude, shut up, you know? Okay, so Ronald's found it. Da -da, da -da. So Ronald said parents should check their children's phone. And look for signs that something is not right. If your child starts showing favoritism toward an adult, ask yourself why. So Riddle maintains that he has not essayed anyone in more than 26 years and now helps run support group for predators to help them take responsibility for what they've done and avoid re -offending. offending. Children do not deserve to be essayed, said, said Reynolds. Well, at least he can say, say that, I guess. I consider me, myself... Recovering child predator. I still recognize the harm that I can create. Jack Reynolds hopes parents will educate their kids about their bodies so they speak up like little boy in 1989. Wow. So guys, we have a couple interviews with this this guy. Let's see here. So this is him. Let's go. Tonight, Call 6 investigates a man who claims to have molested 300 children is now supporting police, saying offenders need to constantly be monitored, especially with Halloween just two days away. Call 6 investigator Rafael Sanchez joins us with more on his call to action. Rafael. Todd, good evening. There are about 11,000 people on, on Indiana's sex offender registry list. Jack Reynolds knows all about being watched. <laughs> You guys hear this guy's voice? <laughs> I would feel like total crap if he was deaf or something, but do you hear this guy's voice? Like Registry list, Jack Reynolds knows all about being watched. <laughs> he sounds like, like a cartoon character or saw something. So anyways. I don't hide. I have no reason to hide. Jack Reynolds spent a decade in jail for molesting children. He says he was sexually abused as a child. And in turn, he estimates that he committed crimes against 300 children. The 60-year-old says he still fights the urge to offend. But if I get hurt, Is he one of those guys where they say, like, you snap yourself with a rubber band, like, any time you have the urge to smoke or whatever? He smacks himself with the rubber band so he doesn't... Oh, my gosh. And stuff like that. Oops. If he's not around, and your family around, sorry guys, I have little things thought, you know. Ah, see, diversions, sex offenders, he just did it. Diversions, he just did it. Diversions, you know, diversions. Sex offenders are tracked by county sheriff's offices. In Indianapolis, deputies check on the most violent offenders oh every gosh. month. But the okay. law writers every month. Look at this guy. Look. <laughs> well, all these guys just look like perverts. <laughs> I don't even know who this guy guy is. I just caught a glimpse of him. Look at this picture. Look at that. Man. Man, oh man. The most violent offenders every month. Though the law requires only every three months. Those considered to be low-level offenders are checked every 90 days. Reynolds supports the constant checkups. I say it is a necessary thing. Yeah. If people know where you're coming from, people are going to know where you're going. The RTV6 app has a link to the state sex offender registry, and you can use it and become aware of your surroundings for you and your family. And Todd, of course, we have much more of our conversation with Mr. Reynolds on the RTV6 app beginning tomorrow morning. So interesting to hear that viewpoint. Thank you, Todd. Well, very interesting. He's a very interesting voice. Okay. 
We have a couple more articles here, guys. I mean, a couple more interviews here. Here we go. How did you find your victims? You guys, yes, he does have a punchable face. He really, really, really does, man. You just, ugh. I found my victims moving from town to town. Um, I scoped them out on um, school grounds. I scoped them out in Little League Diamonds. Um, I scoped them out in my own backyards, my neighborhoods, and things like that. Um, I worked with people who had younger brothers. I socialized with those people so I could get in touch with their younger brothers and begin the grooming process. And um, eventually, it would take time, but I knew what I was doing. It was all calculated. I mean, this is nothing that happened overnight. You know, I knew, and I planned it all. What an evil, evil, horrible excuse for a human being, you guys. It started out where I would move from one town to another. When I got located in one town, um, I would, you know, survey the children in the town to see. It was always a small. Why is he wearing all those rings? You see that? Look at that on his hands. What is going on? Town. It was never a big one um, because big towns have big police forces and big police forces tend not to be very friendly. Small towns have small police forces. You know, they probably never even heard of a child molester or a sex offender or never even had to deal with one. I knew that. At least I played upon that. And um, I got involved in Little League Baseball because I knew from my high school days that I could umpire Little League Baseball. I could umpire baseball. I was good at it. I was good at refereeing basketball and other sports because I could not play worth a crap in high school. But I enjoyed the sport so much that I did not want to not be a part of it. So I took up managing in high school and then our coaches allowed me to referee intramural. And when I got to referee in the mural, that gave me direct access to the younger boys. Oh, man. This is the same as that dude from Penn State, man. What is his name? San, Sandusky, you know? Same thing. And that was how my molesting began, was in high school, when I had direct access to the younger boys. Through so he's been doing this since high school. The intramural programs. How did you get them alone? Grooming. Um, I would check out their family situation. I would check out their clothing to see how well they were, you know, financially. I would check out their social interaction with other kids, you know. When we were on the ballparks or on the, on the gym floor, you know, I would make sure which ones I wanted to molest, I would give them special attention, congratulate them, talk to them. God, this is so terrible, guys. Like I said, this guy, I know that he's trying to do some good, but like I said, with this stuff, stuff for me, guys, you know, one strike and you're out. He should be in a grave somewhere, honestly. When I know that I would never be allowed to talk to anybody else, you know, Aside from everybody, I would give them the attention that a, an official is not supposed to give anybody. And it made them feel like, wow, he's paying me attention. You know, it, it is a direct form of grooming. Were there certain characteristics that you looked for in children before molesting them? In children, yes, but more I also looked at their families. If I thought the father was a threat, I would not approach the child. If I thought that the child had friends that he would tell, I would not approach him. If I thought the child had friends that were in the same capacity he was, I would approach him. For the simple fact that if I could molest him, I could lure him into believing, grooming him into believing that he would enjoy it. And therefore, I could manipulate him into having his other friends come and be molested by me. Jesus, can you? 
Can you believe that, guys? This is crazy. Rarely or ever am I speechless, guys. You guys know how much I talk on this channel. <laughs> but this is crazy. This is an evil, evil human being. This guy should not... Look, I don't want to get dinged by YouTube, but... As well. So perhaps a, a, a child that doesn't really have a whole lot of friends, maybe not really a strong family, things like that. Yes, no spiritual values. Um, weak in education, you know, needs help in many ways. No spiritual values. Um, even from uh, split parenting, you know, has a mother who may be having problems with the family, you know, well, here comes superhero in to help out, you know, wow, well, thank you very much. No problem. You ever need me to take him away for the night so you can have a night out? No problem. It works. So just like that, that female predator that abused like 200 people, 200 young kids, she said, watch who you leave your kids with. Guys, watch who you leave your kids with. And if you are a single mom, which I hope that you're not, right? You have to try and have some type of male around that's like, you know, you're, that's an un like your kid's uncle, the, your dad, the granddad. Someone, some male figure has to be around to protect your children from other other men. Other, wim other women too, but other men, you know? Unbelievable, man. I think there's one more video here, guys. Let's go back. Um, there's one more interview here. Here it is. Now at 4.30 on the Now Indy, protecting your family, especially your children and grandchildren on Halloween. Here's the sex offender says police efforts to attend mandatory meetings on Halloween is good for public safety. Call 6 investigator Rafael Sanchez joins me now live with more. Hey, Raf. Hey, Candace. We're talking about what? Jack what? Reynolds. He claims that he molested about 300 children. What is going on here? What, what is this setup? Look. Are they taking... <laughs> Look, you can see the cameraman. They're like in the are they is the studio shut down and they have to do it in the office building or <laughs> are they using like the the TCAP camera techniques now where the cameraman just coming out of nowhere and and they're and they're following them around or whatever. Just joins me now live with more. Hey Ralph. Hey Candace, we're talking about Jack Reynolds. He claims that he molested about 300 children before he was arrested. He says offenders who complain about being monitored, he says they need to stop complaining. I'm the one who put the sex offender label on me. I'm also the one who strives every day to remove that label. Jack Reynolds fears the temptation, so on Halloween, he plans to be in his bedroom. The Madison County man says his home is off limits. The man who says he was sexually abused as a child says he molested about 300 children. His last victim in 1989. After serving 12 years in prison, he says he's focused on not hurting another child. And if I'm alone in a store and I have eye candy walking around me and I catch my he said eye candy you guys this fucking piece of shit Jesus Christ you guys he said if I'm in a store and I have eye candy walking around do you think guys with that statement this whole I'm on a crusade to better my I don't know he's not the only I I think the only re reason why he's trying to do he doesn't want to get caught again, right? But I don't think it's actually because he's sorry or, the, or that he thinks that what he's doing is wrong, right? Come on, man, come on. Looking around me and I catch myself, I will push my cart and say no out loud. Okay, that warns me that I'm in a danger zone. And people around me, they can look at me and think I'm crazy, but I, I do not care. You I are know crazy. what I'm doing. Reynolds travels the country speaking with support groups. He also walks with permanent reminders tattooed to his wrists. I pray and I take my wrist 
and I read them aloud. Not today and not ever again. This guy is so full of shit, you guys. I feel like he's doing this for attention. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this guy's serious? Do you think that he hasn't really uh, uh, essayed any children since he got out of jail? I don't believe it. I don't believe this guy at all. Reynolds says that all offenders must recognize their urges and must deal with them honestly. He says no lying. They must also ask for help when they need it, and they must also find a support group. And another way that he sort of modifies his behavior, Candace, he has all kinds of rubber bands on both arms, and when he feels that he has an urge to offend, he says he just snaps himself just to remind himself not to do it, to minimize the risk to a child or to himself. And how effective are these mandatory meetings on Halloween? Well, here well there's two things that they could... Uh they could do they could lock him up up for life or just make sure he, that he's not here on this planet anymore that would save a whole lot of rubber bands right mountain county of course it's the 12th year for the mandatory meeting and last year they had a 100 percent attendance of those men wow. that and people required to come to the meeting so it goes well it'll be tomorrow night they'll keep the offenders home while kids go trick-or-treating in indianapolis great news rafael sanchez thank you so much wow you guys wow Wow, 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 wow. Guys, let me know what you think. Okay, let me know if you've heard of this guy. Let me know if you think that he makes any good points at all. Let me know if you think that he is uh, a grifter, a scammer, if he's just doing this for attention, right? Um, Yeah, let me know. I think he's full of it. I think that he's probably done it again. And I think that they should have taken care of this problem a long time ago, if you know what I mean. All right, you guys, this is AJ. I appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, drop a comment, join the Discord, watch the lives, and I am out of here. See you in the next one.